Hello everyone, my name is Paul Davis and thank you for joining me today in this video. Recently I uploaded a video where I taught and explained the song Autumn Leaves. And a lot of questions were about how I arranged that song for the guitar. So to shed some light on that topic, I'm gonna explain that in this video, but not using the same jazz standard, but another one called Lady Bird by Ted Dameron. Here's another Instagram challenge for you. If you learned this song, please post it at Paul Davis Guitar using the hashtag Ladybird and hashtag Paul David so others can find what you came up with. So this is really interesting for basically everyone. If you're into music theory, this song has some very cool things to offer. But if you want to just learn a song to boost your chord melody vibes, this is perfect for you as well. This piece has chords and melodies, which are all written down in the real book. So if you want to check that out, just Google Ladybird real book or buy it. Tabs for what I was playing are available at my Patreon page. So please check it out. Here we go. So I'm first going to play the chord and then the melody, which is played over the chord and how I mold it into one. So the melody line is like this, three, four. And it's played over a C major seven chord which is played like this, fret 8, skip a string, fret 9, fret 9, and fret 8. So to mold that into one, I did it like this. My thumb is just playing quarter notes on each beat, the bass note. But feel free to change that up a little bit. The next chord is in the uh, real book version, an F minor 7 chord. And since I'm playing over here, I'm gonna play that chord over here as well. 8, and then 10, 8, 9, and that's it. I'm not playing the first string. And the melody is like this. On the F chord. 3, 4, So we immediately have a problem because the F minor 7 chord is played like this. But the melody is a note that doesn't fit the chord. So it's fret 11 on the B string. So now it isn't an F minor 7. This is an F minor 11. That's no problem. Just play it like this. On the guitar we always need to take the freedom to change the chord up a little bit if it doesn't fit. So, in this case, I'm just playing the pinky on the 11th fret of the B string. And then to my middle finger for the second melody note. So fret 9 on the B string. And then fret 10 on the D string. And fret 8 on the G string. Now we play the melody chord. And if you want to have it in the same groove as the previous chord, just keep your thumb going. Um. That's it. That's how we incorporate the melody into the F minor chord. Now we go to the next chord, which is a B flat 7. So it's your 2 5 for the jazz geeks out there. 2 5. Uh, of E flat in this case. But we're not going to E flat, but that's another thing. So, um,. On the B flat chord, the melody is played like this. So it's the ending of the phrase from the F minor chord. So it's fret 8 and 6 on the B string. And if you want to have those notes into the B flat 7 chord, you can play it like this with your pinky fret 8 on the B string and then just lift your pinky playing B string with your index finger. So this chord is a B13 or an add 13. But you can always play it like this. 
So the first four bars of this beautiful song sounds like this. Cool. So now we made a melody and the chords into one guitar. So the next four bars, here we go. The chords are, um, the beginning is the same. C major seven, two bars again, same melody. But now we're going to a different set of chords. It's B flat minor, seven, like this, often played. And to E seven, E flat seven, I should say. So it's again a two, five, two of A flat major. And that is exactly where we're going after that. But um, so B flat minor. And the melody is like this. So it's on the E string, fret eight and six. And then on the G string, fret six. And on the B string, fret six. So how can we play that into the B flat minor chord? Well, the easiest thing to do is to just bar your index finger all across the sixth fret. And now you can play the highest note with your ring finger, fret eight. And then you release the, the ring finger, play the barred E string, followed by the G and the B string. And now we go to the E flat seven chord and the melody on the E flat seven chord is fret eight and six on the first string. So the melody in total is. And the is played on the E flat seven chord. So what you can do is keep your index finger barred, but now from the A string down. Um, and I just have the freedom to make it an E9 chord. You always have the freedom to add more notes to the chord, especially in jazz. So I'm gonna add a nine to the chord to make the chord more convenient for the guitar because I can just bar the chord. I'm skipping the D string and then six, six, and six on the G, B, and E string. And now I can easily add the ring finger on the first string to play the melody. So, or you can play it like this if you want to have the third also. And then play with your pinky. It's a little more difficult fingering, but it's not that hard. So bars five to nine sounds like this. So bar nine is where it gets a little bit tricky for your left hand. So this is your typical A flat major seven chord. Fret four, skip a string, five, five, and four. And the melody over the A flat seven chord is this, three, four. So how do we put that melody on top of the chord? Well, the best thing you can do to fret the root note with your thumb. So fret four on the low E string. Then you have your middle finger and your ring finger and your pinky, your index finger, I should say, to play fret five, five, and four on the D, G, and B string. And your pinky can play the melody. If you bar your finger on fret four of the first string also, you can use that as the last note, so. It's a little bit cramped up, but sometimes it's just the way it should be. Um, okay, so that's the A flat major chord. If you really have trouble playing it like this, there are some workarounds. You can just omit the root note. If you play with a bass player, you can just always omit the root note, so you can have more stuff going on in the chord. But if you're playing alone, that's not really what you want to do. So the next chord is an A minor seven. Typically play like this. And the melody is seven, six, and five on the first string. The same rhythmic uh, idea as the previous lick. Three, four. But then play it over two chords, over A minor and D seven. 
the 2 and 5 of G. So um, that's played over A minor 7. So it's good if you play an A minor chord, you can use an open string as a root note, which is very convenient. And then we play our index finger all the way, barring from fret 5, on the D string all the way down. Now we have an A minor 7 chord, and we can easily play the melody on the first string. You see? It's not that difficult. And the second part of this melody is played over a D7 chord. And I'm again adding a 9 to the chord to make it sound a little more contemporary, and it fits my voicing better, um, my fingers. So um, the chord is like this, 5 from the, D, from the A string down, 5, 4, 5, bar your ring. For beginners that could be real difficult, but if you try it long enough, you get it down. And then your pinky plays fret 7 on the high E string, to 6 and to 5, or use your ring finger if you're barring it. This is it. So from A minor, cool. So bars 9 to 12 sound like this. All right, now we're going to the ending, the last part of the song. We start which starts with a D minor chord, the 2 of C, so back to the home chord, 2, 5, 1, D minor, G7, C major 7. And melody is like this, which fits perfectly in this D minor 7 chord shape, 5, 7, 5, 6, 5, from the A string down. And now our pinky plays, fret 8 on the first string. And now we remove our pinky, we play the first string, barring with our index finger, and then the second string, our sixth fret. And now the following note is basically from the next chord, the E note, fret 5 on the B string, and we go to a G7 chord but you want to keep that note going, ringing through over that bar. So we're gonna play that chord. And then we're fretting the chord, which is a G13. So we're playing fret three, skip a string, fret three again, and then fret four. And then our pinky is playing the melody from the previous bar. So. And now you strum the chord again. And then you play the melody, it's just two melody notes, it's um, over here, fret 6 and 7 on the G string, followed by the G, fret 8 on the B string, which is already a leading in note from the turnaround. The cool turnaround of this song is E minor 7 or C major 7, you see it in different ways sometimes. And then E flat major 7, barred all the way across the first string, because this note is basically from the melody. So it's 6, 8, 7, 8, and then 6 again. And then the second to last chord, A flat major, we already discussed that one. And then to um, D flat major 7, so it's 4, 6, 5, 6, and 4. And then this results to the first chord again, C major 7. So this is a song played slowly one time in total.
All right, a beautiful piece, a beautiful jazz standard. This was Paul Davis. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And if you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and share and hit the bell button. <laughs> Thanks, have a wonderful day. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.